Okay. Well, hello. Hi, Julie. So I'm so happy to uh, introduce you or talk with you to our audience uh, at Pluck. Um, not only um, are you a Pluck fan, correct? Um, but you yeah. you specialize in hair analysis, which which I'm super excited to kind of dive into because a lot of what you do is connected to what we do. And I'd love you to, before we fully go into that connection, just share a little bit about um, you and, and how you came to where you are and, and what it is you do. Well, I am a functional medicine nutritionist and I've been doing this 11 years and I decided to specialize in female hair loss just because before I got into this field, I suffered myself from extreme hair loss and I was so. Was that from a, was, was that from a pregnancy or was that just from life? Like kind of a, a it, phase of life? Yeah, it was, it was some major stress. And then I didn't realize I was celiac. I became anemic. So I wasn't absorbing my nutrients that coupled with stress, man, it was, but the worst about it was I went to so many physicians and they all said, Oh, there's nothing you can do about it. It doesn't matter what you eat. And, you know, Oh, you could try some Rogaine or some medications, but you know, nothing's guaranteed to work. Were they checking any, did they do any tests? Did they run any tests? None. Okay. So this is all just them Yeah. hearing what's going on and then kind of brushing it off yes just totally brushing it off and I've gotten into some research and actually the National Hair Loss Association now is is aware of physicians blowing off you know just not acknowledging women's hair loss complaints and they're making it um as a considering it a life-altering situation because it can the all the stress causes because you know women's are our hairs are crown of glory and when we're (laughs) when our hair goes away you know it it affects us in so many ways not only physically but emotionally and and with our relationships and our job and so forth they're now making it um So that the medical community actually pays attention to it and as society as a whole, I mean, they're really bringing up the fact that women's hair health is really a lot more important than the medical community has ever acknowledged. And again, they've just brushed it off. I mean, for men, it's okay for them to lose their hair and men don't care as much because they can just shave their head, but women, you know, can hide behind it with extensions and hats and scarves and so forth but it's not getting to the root cause and even this billion dollar hair industry that just markets so many deceptions and and um claims that aren't backed up by science and none of it gets to the root cause of it i mean it might help for a little bit but some of these procedures are very expensive and don't have anything to do with your health i mean a lot of people don't even realize that our hair health begins from within. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. It's... With the nutrients we eat or absorb, you know, I mean, there's one thing about eating well, but are you absorbing them? That was like me, I was eating okay, but I wasn't absorbing them. And that's what I find out with a lot of these women I work with. I mean, they come to me and they're, they've got a lot of other health issues but their biggest complaint is the hair loss. And once I start doing functional labs, I'm like, well, no wonder you're not growing your hair. You're not absorbing your, your nutrients. What are some of the, if, if you were able to kind of generalize, what are some of the reasons why someone might not be absorbing their nutrients? Well, I can find it out through uh, functional labs, such as the stool test and the organic acids tests are going to show me um that in particularly and it can be leaky gut it could be celiac disease it can be just an imbalance they're not they're they're not getting enough of a certain nutrient so they're depleted in it and you know of course our nutrients first go to our vital organs such as our heart and so forth to keep us alive and anything else is for our hair <laughs> i mean 
are they've you know we have not only the gut microbiome but now they've discovered the hair scalp follicle microbiome that has the third highest turnover in the body and requires enormous amount of energy because it has also a very high metabolism so again there might be one thing if you're getting those nutrients but if you're not ab absorbing them then you know, just it puts another layer. That's why I love your flux seasoning. I think it's brilliant. I, I think it's just brilliant. I want to get, I have that little, I meant to bring it for the podcast, but the little container. Oh, the tin. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, what I realized is it, it includes all the top hair health nutrients. So it's so perfect because most people don't like to eat liver or organ meats. Right. Sounds like you grew up not eating those. No, I did not. Uh, <laughs> I, I basically created pluck for myself, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I wanted an easy way to get, I knew organ meats were nutrient dense. I knew they were important for us, but there's hurdles, right? And, and, and just like everyone else, I, you know, I, I, I kind of faced those hurdles as well. So I was like, well, how can I solve those for myself and for everyone? Yeah, I, I just love it. I think it tastes fantastic. I think it's brilliant. And I mean, I grew up eating liver and onions. My sister would feed it to the dog under the table <laughs> <laughs> and I could clear out roommates, you know, making liver and onion. I love it. I could definitely clear out my roommates if I wanted the place to myself or what have you, because most people don't like it. So I think this is just brilliant to have the seasoning where you get it because there's one thing taking supplements, but if you get it within your food, within, especially within a spice, I, I just think it's fantastic. What, you know, I was just talking to someone recently about this. What is your thought on this? Um, when you take it as a supplement in a capsule, do you think it's the same absorbability as if you then take it as food? Or is eating as food more absorbable, absorbable because you don't have a, you know, some people talk about, you know, the gelatin capsules or the things that the capsules are made of. And of course the stomach acid gets through that, but is it as, you know, when we bypass our natural uh, digestive process. So, you know, chewing saliva, you know, the breaking down of the molecules, like is that going to make it more absorbable than if you just take it in a capsule? I mean, I, I don't know. I Do mean, I'm thought? not a chemist, but I've always said food first and foremost, and that your spices are included as a food. They're a food. Right. So absolutely, our our body is meant to eat food. Supplements, that's why they're called supplements, just supplemental. They help you get to your goals faster. But at the end of the day, they're still supplements and they're not going to be as bioavailable to our body as, as foods and spices. And also the way you make your pluck, I was researching, I mean, you, you get it from grass fed cows, you're, you know, it's just very clean resources. You can't always get that in supplements. You know, there's a lot of fillers. You even have to be careful in supplements that they're not using gluten as a binder, a filler. And a lot of these that aren't medical grade supplements, I mean, who knows? You, it's not F it's not regulated by the FDA. So you can get so many crazy things in those supplements that are not even on the label, or they might say it's vitamin C, what have you. And they do a test on it. Um, it only includes 40% vitamin C or something. Right. Right. It's not always a hundred percent pure. Um, I, I also have to wonder too, you know, I always, I've been giving this example a lot when I talk, you know, when we, when we take a pill and we, we don't get an immediate communication with our body of how much we need, you know, right. we're all bio individual, um, individuals. So, you know, when you read the back of that liver capsule, whatever it is, it's saying take eight, right? It's like, well, what is that? Do I need eight? Do you need eight? We're probably different sizes, you know. We're obviously we're different sexes. It's like, what, what is, what, how much do I really need? And when you bypass the the natural order of digestion, in my for my money, it's like you're completely missing that 
that communication that your body will give you if you honor the process. So like if I need more salt, if I put salt on my tongue, I get an immediate communication of how much more salt I want or how much more salt I don't want. Like, or, you know, my body communicates, says, right. yes, this tastes good. Or it will say, oh, this doesn't taste right. So there's, we completely miss that when we do um, a capsule. You're so right. And it's really really scary because people think oh i'll supplement with say let's let's look at selenium for example you can get too much selenium and you can cause all sorts of problems even with biotin biotin is in every hair supplement and it doesn't even help grow hair it only helps um keep hairs from not getting dry and brittle which is more prone to thinning but it doesn't help grow hair yet all the marketing it's like Biotin, biotin, and some of these supplements have way too much biotin and it can really jack up your system one way or another. Actually, all supplements. I mean, I'm very, very careful when I recommend supplements to somebody and I have to know what other supplements are taking and what medications are taking because also supplements can interact with medications. And if they're eating a certain food, a lot of a certain food, you know, they definitely can get too much of a vitamin or a mineral. And that can cause hair loss as well. If you get too much iron, you can, you can get hair loss. Or if you are anemic like I was, you can have hair loss. That's why, you know, you want to do a whole entire iron panel and also do the calculations to see how your iron is saturating or not, you know, saturation level. The same with the thyroid panel. I mean, there's a lot of nutrients for uh, thyroid that are actually in organ meats. But you can get too much of one or the other. That's why when you eat those natural foods, instead of supplementing, you, you, your body knows so much more what to do with it. Plus, you're getting it from a natural source that's not going to have overabundant of, of you know this or that because it's a, a, it's a natural source. Right. It just makes a lot more sense. <laughs> yeah. Well, I always find it interesting because like when kids, for example, who are much more in touch with their intuitive eating, you know, at that age, um, when they taste pluck, they it's this like immediate kind of like, oh, I want I want more of this. You know what I mean? And I really do believe that's their body communicating. Yeah, yes, it tastes good. That's one element. But on a deeper level, I think it's their body communicating to them like, oh, you I want more of this. Right. And what I like about that is that then it will also do the other end of that, which is when their body doesn't need more vitamin A or more of what the the organ, what's in the organ meats, it sure. will also tell them that yeah. just like it does with salt. It's no different, right? Salt tastes good when you need it. And when you don't need it, it tastes horrible. It's like you can't even take another bite of it because it's like it tastes icky. Right right? Your body completely has that intuitive knowledge that communicate immediate communication and it just gets bypassed when we do capsules. And to your point, even when we're doing, um, when, when we have the fillers and the things that are in these, these elements that we don't even know what they are, or, you know, sometimes they're, they're added ingredients that our bodies didn't, weren't even aware we're going to get with it. Right, right. And our body doesn't know what to do with it. And it can just jack up other systems within our body that, you know, balance, it gets everything else out of balance when we're just merely taking a supplement we think we need. That's why it's, I mean, it's so important to work with a practitioner or a nutritionist or, you know, especially functional medicine um, practitioner instead of a doctor, because they're not trained or educated on supplements and it's not more is better. You have to be very careful. Well, walk me through. So, cause I want to, I want to hear more about your personal experience, your personal story with this. So, so we all lose hair every day. So how, how would someone know, Oh wait, this is abnormal. So, so what, what was happening to you that you were like, this is, this is not right. Like how much hair were you losing? Well, First of all, let me just backtrack it. You, you normally you lose about a hundred to 150 strands of hair a day. That's normal. But any more than that, you need to pay attention 
Don't just think, oh, it'll grow back. No, 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 no. You need to pay attention to that because if you let it go for too long, what can happen is that hair scalp follicles can scar over and then hair regrowth is nearly impossible. So what happened to me was uh, I, within just a couple of weeks, I was losing hair like crazy. I was here, there, everywhere. And uh, again, that was before I, I, I got into nutrition and, you know, these physicians just, they, they just put me off. They just dismissed me. And I started researching the heck out of it. And that along with my mother's cancer scare, I decided to quit my media career and go back to school to study nutrition. But in that whole transformation, I, I did get my back, my body back into balance and I, I regrew my hair naturally. So I really am on a mission to help women do the same and get back into balance because our hair health really depends on the health of our body and it's still not known. Of course, there's so much marketing from the billion dollar hair industry, you'd never know it. And then a lot of dermatologists don't even realize it either. <laughs> You know, they have maybe one class in nutrition, so they're not, they're not linking the two together. Um, and so you, where did you go to school, by the way? Did you go to NTA? I, Huntington, Huntington College of Health Sciences. And then I, I, I'm a certified functional medicine practitioner through the Functional Medicine University. Oh, nice. Yeah. And then, so you, you started then, you tested and then from those tests, what were some of the things, because you were mentioning you don't like to get too much from this, the supplements. So did you start changing your diet? And if so, how did your diet change? Oh, yes, I did start changing my diet and, and I got my stress better managed because also stress, if you're constantly stressed as I was at that time, it's really hard to absorb your nutrients. Mm. Yeah. And that just not to change subjects, but I just want to mention that. Have you heard of the COVID shed? Yes, I have. Yeah. That's a stress induced hair loss. COVID that's shed from people that have got the vaccine. Yeah. No, from from having COVID, COVID post COVID data shows that 66% of the people that were infected with COVID afterwards, they're experiencing a lot of hair loss and they've even called it COVID shed and they've done studies on it and so forth. But that's a stress induced type of hair loss. It's called telogen effluvium. They're calling it chronic telogen effluvium, which is easier to grow back than say alopecia or, you know, some of these others that you have to a treat as more of an autoimmune to, well, alopecia is an autoimmune disease, but um, I guess I'm getting sidetracked here a little bit. It just, I just, I, that goes back to your, all the nutrients that your, your spice has. I just, do you want me to go through the ones that are the yeah, top? You, were, you, you said you had a PDF on, on the hair mineral. So yeah, sure. let's, let's see that and talk about okay. it. Okay. Okay. Let me share my screen. Looks like I have to, you have to enable me. Hmm. Now we're going to get in the weeds around. <laughs> it's all right. You know, I'll just go through them and then you can share it with your viewers. Yeah, I'm not sure. They can, yeah, they can. Uh... It's all right. Yeah, I am so not protein, sure. How protein to first and foremost, which, oh, you know, organ meats are protein. Our hair fibers are main or mostly protein. It helps give our hair strength and texture and shine. Um, and then vitamin D, but I mean, vitamin D plays a role in stimulating new and old hair growth follicles. So if there's not enough vitamin D in your system, your hair growth can be stunted. And then vitamin A, now there's two different types of vitamin A, but the vitamin A in your seasoning is the which I, which is the best type. <laughs> um, it helps make um, the sebum that conditions your scalp, which is essential for healthy hair growth. It also stimulates the growth of hair follicle stem cells. 
And then niacin um, can really help um, take away the buildup of calcium and DHT that can otherwise inhibit hair growth. And then iron, like I was mentioning earlier, you can get too much or too little, but the iron that you find in organ meats is 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 the great type of iron as is the the type of protein so the the protein in animal protein has a branched chain amino acids that's why people that eat a vegan or vegetarian diet really struggle with hair loss as well because they're not getting those branched chain amino acids that you find in animal meats and then essential fatty acids i mean omega 3s if they're grass fed cows as you source from, then they're getting, they're getting those good omega-3s, essential fatty acids, as well as selenium, biotin, zinc, manganese, vitamin E. Selenium aids in the a formation of hair follicles or protects against damage. Biotin, as I mentioned earlier, does not help with hair growth, but deficiencies can lead to dry, brittle hair. And then zinc, <laughs> is involved in tissue growth for our entire body, but including repair of, of hair follicles. And then manganese, a really nice mineral, again, found in organ meats. Um, deficiencies can lead to slow hair growth and vitamin E helps reduce the breakdown of follicles, um, which provide moisture by soothing the oil glands. And, you know, it's interesting also the, the organ meats have a little bit of vitamin C in there too. I mean, right. not a lot, like 3%, but that helps with the absorption of protein. And I just, yeah, yeah, and I just, I should be giving that to all my clients. So then here's, a, <laughs> here's some pluck seasoning. Yeah, right. <laughs> Easy entry gate, gateway. Um <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I love, I love that. Uh, well, so first of all, uh, this PDF we'll make available to anyone watching, right? We'll give the link to the, to that, um, so you can see what minerals and vitamins go into um, hair, right? That's what the PDF is showing. Yes, yes, yes. But all of them are included in your pluck seasoning. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, yeah. and and to your point too, what I love about getting uh, these vitamins and minerals from real food is that they are also composed in the way nature intended. So, uh, you know, the vitamin C, while it might be low, is there to help with absorbability. You know, the iron and magnesium are both there. The, the fat is also there to support the fat solubility of these vitamins, you know? So um, I, I just love that when we get it from a whole food, it's really as, you know, it's mother nature made, it's as, as was intended. And so there's no need to be kind of mindful about um, you know, oh, I should be eating food with this supplement or something. It's like, no, no, it is a food. So you're, you're sure. already good. I also do. I mean, I, I, I hear you on the whole, like, uh, that sometimes we can get too much of certain nutrients and we have to remember that. And I'm always kind of trying to equate, cause there are, there are a lot of people that are, are taking eating organ meats. Um, like there's the side that, okay, majority of us are not getting enough organ meats at all in our diets. And then there's some people that are eating a lot of them all the time. And my whole point is like, look, if you were in a tribe and back in the day and you killed an animal, there was one liver. It wasn't 50 livers. It was sure. one from that one animal. Sure. And so your whole tribe of 15 to 30 had to distribute that animal around. And so usually... You know, you gave it to the children, you gave it to those that were sick, you gave it to those that were trying to get pregnant or were pregnant. You divvied it out based on what people needed, um, but sure. it wasn't something you were necessarily eating a whole liver, you know, or a large chunk of liver every day. And sure. that precisely goes into the what we, what we talked about earlier is why I love eating um, like whether it's from pluck or eating the actual organ, because your body will tell you that you don't need more. It will, it will commute the, the liver won't taste right. It will start to, you, you will literally, it will come over your body of like, I can't take another bite. It will, you will get that communication. And that tells you right there, your body's protecting itself. You know, our bodies are amazing, right? And they so it's are amazing. what your body's doing. Sure. They are amazing. 
And also, I mean, I think, you know, I think our body also knows when we're getting food that's not quality. And, you know, you define quality as grass fed, grass finished, you know, treated pasture raised animals with raised without GMOs or hormones as close to nature as possible. Um, and, you know, when someone starts eating better, I, I could see a different, some people see a difference and lose 10 pounds within, you know, a week because they're just shedding all the inflammation because mm -hmm. all these, these crappy foods, as you know, can just cause so much chronic inflammation in your body. And it, just going back to the point of how miraculous your body is and it wants to heal. <laughs> yeah. It, well, I, it, I love talking about this. Um, and I love hearing your story. Uh, where can people learn more about you and what you do and, 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 uh, so not only show you, share your socials, but how someone might work, how, how might they reach out to you to work with you? Should they want to? Sure. They can go to my website. They can find it at Julie at Julie com, And that's an O L S O N.com. Excellent. And, and then where, and what's your handle on, uh, on socials? Oh, it's Julie Olson FN for functional okay. nutritionists. Excellent. I'll put I'll put that in the um, show notes. Um, and before we get off, though, but uh, I would love to know, like you mentioned that stress was really high for you when you when you made the changes. What were like a couple of things you did, changes you made that maybe people watching can initiate after they stop, you know, after this, you know, immediately? What what, what are some of the things you learned or have learned that were de-stressors for you in your life? Um, well, a, a big one for me was just slowing down. I didn't realize that I have so many health problems until I actually slew down, I slowed down, <laughs> slowed down. Um, uh, my story's uh, too long to mention here, but my mother was, um, just diagnosed with cancer at the same time. So that, um, I decided to move. I was working at Warner Brothers. I decided to move back to Colorado to support her. And, and I had, I mean, I was just living that fast paced lifestyle. And I thought I was tired just because of that and found out I had really high Epstein bar virus, but slow down, you know, chew your food, um, enjoy your food and I. Uh, get protein at every meal, you know, 20 grams of protein, um, get in those half a plate of vegetables, organic vegetables and get in those healthy fats. I mean, that's all we need. And it's simple once you break it down. Um, but pay attention to your body and, and just slow down and, and realize that it's not all about everything else at the end of the day our health is our wealth <laughs> mm, i like that our health is our wealth and i i think it's interesting too um or did you ever connect this dot of like how what a gift your mother's illness was for you as hard as it, it was because it, it, was. it was the trigger that changed the path of my life i ended up yeah quitting, um, you know, my dream job and moving back. I worked in television for a while until I realized that I was putting blinders on my own health. And I decided to go back to school to study nutrition, not only to help my mother, but to figure out why the heck I was losing my hair. And I was just realized that, again, you know, if you don't feel good, it, it doesn't really matter what job you're doing or what's going on that's the most important thing in life and sometimes it like you said my mother was the turning point for that because it forced me to slow down and look at things differently yeah yeah that's powerful and Do you, can I ask you something when you work with a lot of these you know you said some 
famous families, you 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 cook for them and so forth. Do you find that they are are kind of on the fast track as well and and they don't really understand the the value of healthy food? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, everyone kind of has their own ideas of what healthy is. Uh, a lot of them that I worked with, they would see kind of my passion and my kind of groundedness in what I did. And they typically would say, well, we'll do what you do. Um, but for the most part, it depends on who I was working with, you know, for the really, really kind of A-list actors, they they have a team of people, you know, I mean, they're I think one thing people don't realize is that it's not really discipline that's necessarily getting them healthy. It's it's because they see themselves as a product. And so they hire enough people to monitor their health for them. So they have trainers, they have therapists, they have massage therapists, they have chefs, they, they, they have someone managing every aspect of their life because they see themselves as the, you know, a product that needs to be managed. Right. And they, as they should, I mean, when they're, when you're at that echelon, um, but a lot of them, yeah, they have health issues. There's stuff going on that they may not be connecting to their health. They're very human. You know, I guess that's the best answer is they're, they're, they're really, they're, they're dealing with the same things we are, but they just have more money to throw at it. Yeah. And sometimes more fame as well, you know? 